And welcome back to Selfer Winter's Survival Winter, the role-playing game. The Conflux Saga has really kicked off, hasn't it? We're... I'm not gonna say deep into book two, but, you know, getting in there, right? Getting into some of the meatier bits. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We are... It's, there is a quest going on. Uh, and who knows it will if it will be successful or not. I don't know. In fact, uh, we will have to see soon. But before we do that, we want to introduce everyone. Well, uh, I'm the infamous Rob, and I get to portray Sir Artigu to Fontress of Lore. Uh, still sticking with the Sir, and is just going to roll his goal of keeping everyone else alive on through this whole quest. It's going to be a throughput. <laughs> No, no, you're muted. You're, you're muted. muted. So close. I am Stephanie, and I play Aldrida de Vumbra. Uh, I am your local party's witch and huntswoman and swordswoman and general catch-all for things the party can't do. Um, <laughs> my temporary goal for this quest uh, currently is to refill my uh, drug stash. Uh, I think <laughs> that's a, a good one because... Somebody, somebody made me trade it all last time for a very important quest things. So, yeah, need more drugs. A noble goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see how well that goes. Hi, <laughs> uh, I'm Goat, and I am playing uh, Stefano de Crimbid, the current most powerful wizard, as far as his mind is concerned. And uh, we're uh, going to trace through this forest and hopefully not get eaten by strange vegetation. Right? Hopefully. That's Very hopefully. Big, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, that is that is always the hope. Hey, everyone. I'm Jess. I play uh, Lady Brittany Wallace White, uh, resident mean girl, kind of losing her edge these days, but, you know, uh, just have to do something <laughs> horrible every once in a while to, to make myself feel better. Uh, my temporary goal is a secret. <laughs> Ooh, because she's a resident mean girl. See? See what you did there? See what she did? I don't know. <laughs> I was just. Uh, yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Alan. I'm playing uh, Bedonius, Monk of Brands, um, herding this group of people to uh, uh, try to track down the the eyes. Uh, we are uh, apparently trying to find the green one at the yes. moment. It's whatever the rocky version of a fish out of water is. Yeah. <laughs> we're not just people, we're the chosen ones. What? He's oh. he's on land now. It's all the fine. Pink said. And there is a, a likelihood that there will even be rock under his feet before this quest is over. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe not. Probably speaks too quickly though. Yeah. Um and speaking of speaking, uh, who wants to speak about what happened last session and gain a fake die? Because I think there is another yeah. one in the chalice. I there is one go. in the chalice. <laughs> is there really? Wait, we have s s uh, five players. There is no dice in the chalice. I'm going to nick all of them. <laughs> well, no. then I don't see a point. You're <laughs> totally right. No recap for you. Recap for me. Yeah, last session. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In exchange for all the fate die, Mikhail. Go yeah, on. the ones you just took. You have to recap. Yes. <laughs> have to do it. Yes. Uh, so for those who don't, don't who might not have uh, uh, followed uh, to, I, I guess everybody's watching or listening now has followed the campaign forever. Uh, but this game has a, a fate die mechanic, and and you use the it's like an economy, and to use the skills abilities of the characters you spend those fake dice, and you regain them by fulfilling various role-playing objectives, which is a very nice, neat, neat mechanic, I think. Um, but uh, my characters, the NPCs, also have to spend fake dice for their um, abilities, so I have my own special pool that is re refreshed every session. I don't have to do anything special role-play to refresh it, though there are times when I'll make a deal with the players if I'm low on fate dice and give them favors, story favors, in, f in exchange for a fate die. So that can happen. That has happened a couple of times. Anyway, 
Last session, you arrived on Safina, the southern island of the Tracorian Islands. I'm not even going to call it the Tracorian Empire anymore because I feel like it's being carved up by by the Empress, uh, the, Rebels. the Imperial couple on Palamux, and and is it President Lemur Spada now on Trismira? Is Ooh, I gotta tell you, we're really thinking about First Citizen. First Citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Consul <laughs> Lemur? Consul works? Yeah. I kind of like First Citizen. As uh, I'm stealing it from Jess, because it, it is a little <laughs> bit more mustache twirly. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally for the sad. record, Garyon has never called himself an emperor. <laughs> Fair I mean, point. But if you want to go with, if you want mustache twirly, you have to go with Chancellor. Well, that was actually where I started with Supreme Chancellor, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Lemur. Yeah. <laughs> One of the Dark Lords of the Sith. No, wait. Um, <laughs> wrong universe. As Brittany really pointed out in the most recently posted at this point episode, Gary and in fact hates it when people refer to him as his Imperial Majesty. And yet, he they encourages right. everyone to do so. But uh, yeah, he can blame his wife for that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Safina is still officially a part of the Tracorian Empire uh, and also a haven of the Inquisition. The brave adventurers noticed very quickly that there were wanted posters of them everywhere here as well. Um, but they found the rewards for their <laughs> potential capture woefully lacking and were very disappointed that the price on their heads were so... Very disappointed. Very disappointed. They also learned that um, another oracle uh, or seer or mystic of some kind um, apparently, uh, 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 a visionary or mystic of uh, the priestess uh, of the goddess Anzalis had been murdered just days prior in Teagold. No doubt by the same people who keep killing, you know, oracles and monks and, and whatnot. We've seen it's been a bit of a murder spree. It's like a, a, a an 80s one that we had nothing to do with. You had nothing to do with it, yeah. Despite uh, what it says on those posters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the posters yeah. are a lie. The, the, apparently. Um, so, Please get our crimes right. Uh, <laughs> one, once more, the group donned their clever disguise as uh, buskers, and uh, Lady Brittany and uh, uh, Deidre did their job really well, uh, meaning that the locals had just about no chance at all to see through the disguise. Um, however, before they could leave Teagold, they also had to deal with some of Lady Brittany's siblings who were unexpectedly in Teagold in force. Unexpectedly numerous, yes. <laughs> yes, unexpectedly numerous too. Uh, but this worked fairly well, apparently. Um, they exchanged pleasantries and then went their separate ways in a surprisingly smooth interaction. <laughs> Um, you have. You know, guys, I, I, I'm not sure they're actually related. <laughs> <laughs> you had a short stop over at the Long Pint. Um, had enjoyed some of Safina's delicacies before you hitched a ride with the local farmer who was going back to the village of Grald from Tigold. And there you spent the evening where uh, Eldrida learned, uh, exchanged recipes, and, uh, you know talked shop with other potion makers and apothecaries uh, finally learning and understanding enough to make black powder so now she can make things go boom I know my and I here for all your potion making needs yes <laughs> and I think that's about where we're at you are in the morning ready to go into the actual Tokme forest are you not mm -hmm. yeah, I think the idea is we're going to get a boat and Go upstream. Mm. Yeah, that tend, tends to be faster than, than other methods, right? So Plus walking in a place with the shrubs that water blood. Yeah, right. it's, that's not a popular thing, is it? <laughs> Can't imagine why. Um, uh, the I mean, to be fair, there are plenty of people who want my blood, but you know. The Safinias are, of course, as always, very courteous and nice. You don't have a boat, mind you. We don't have a boat yet. Are you gonna buy one? 
Oh yes, we're gonna use our fat stacks of cash to buy a boat. I mean, we are. What's up? No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, does anyone actually want to buy a boat versus just taking a boat? Well, I don't want to steal from these people. They've been nice to oh. us. Oh, this is why you never have any money, Aldrida. <laughs> yeah, we, well, they they fed us and exchanged drugs. recipes and yeah. we're not gonna steal from them we ate with them that's rude we're gonna steal from other people could we negotiate for one well, well buying... perhaps we hire a boat and captain do any of you know the waters of this river that's captain dr Safanu, the most powerful necromancer in the world <laughs> wizard he's going by oh. wizard now Oh, wizard? I'm sorry, I'm behind the times. <laughs> I, I do more than just necromancy, you know. He's a car commissioned uh, runecaster. Not just a hideous face. <laughs> and moon magic. I got some moon magic going too. Um, yeah, we should probably... Uh, I'm willing to spend my lump sum three to be able to get through the, this forest on a boat instead of having to trudge through it. Well, to, to get a boat big enough to carry all of you, that that would be three successes. So, yeah. Two successes gives you basically a rowboat. Oh. I mean, I could do the negotiating and the lump sum could be a bonus? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Well, uh, first of all, you do the, the purchase roll. And if that fails, we get to go to negotiations. Because I think between me and the lump sum, that would be six dice, yeah? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, we, we start with the purchase roll, and then you do the negotiation if the purchase roll fails. Yeah, okay. but for the purchase roll... Um, the purchase roll is your wealth level, plus the lump sum. Yeah, so that would be six dice, yes? You're right, you're right. Wow, because <laughs> you are... Yeah, you're noble now. Yeah, well, I was always noble, but you know, yes. I finally really got a chance to buy that. <laughs> yes! <clears throat> You're a noble! Alrighty, let's see here. Am I feeling wealthy today? I am, apparently. Yes, you are. I'm feeling ridiculously yep. wealthy. How about that? We get that? a good boat. We bought That's... a boat. What are we coming to? <laughs> nice. Well, yes. we needed a boat. We've been traveling by boat ridiculously for a long time, so I think this is a good investment. Yep. We had a boat. What happened to it? <laughs> Is it like apparently still back on Transmira with the Zeppelon? So <laughs> you can just about afford it, but your uh, wealth goes down one step because you have no sixes there. Um, you can bargain though. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, how does that work? Uh, roll water. Okay. Uh, use fake dice up to your level in merchant, which is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, prohibited from taking that, in fact. Yes. On the other hand, uh, you are uh, talking to a local who is not necessarily a merchant, and it's a Safinian, and uh, all of that sort. So, uh, yeah, that works. You have two successes. They have one. <laughs> You're fine, is what I'm saying. So because so, of that bartering, uh, well, we spent the lump sum, right? Yeah, you no, it's it's uh, you you do not we have gambled the lump sum, but we got successes for it. You do right? not exactly you 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 spend the Ew. lump sum, you spend the lump sum, you have the the resources to uh, buy the boat, and Lady Brittany doesn't lose a point of, of wealth for now. But the lump sum is gone. Then go. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, okay. They're one shot. Yep. But now you right. have a boat, which is uh, basically a, 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 well, fairly sizable one. It's like a, a big enough to be like a fishing vessel at sea, essentially. It's, it's certainly big enough to, to house all, all of yours. And we can take this onto the ocean? Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. You're welcome, everyone. It's, it's a <laughs> like, small like, boat. Uh, there's a slight difference the between. Like, are we talking like leave home out of the ocean, come back, or are we talking like voyage across the ocean? Two different. <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, like a um, small sloop type of size at the best. Ooh. 
Hang on. It sounds like it can get us across the ocean. Yeah, that can get you across the sure, ocean. Sure, this is going to be terrible. Great. It's not going to be a lovely <laughs> sail, maybe. I mean, it depends on the weather, but... It's not going to be comfortable like being on a caravel or anything. It's, it's like not nearly the same size as a caravel. The sloop will give you... Just because you're curious. And oh, God. I'm curious. <laughs> the size is... Uh, you really want to use it in, in coastal waters, preferably. Uh, one sail. Uh, you can use uh, several uh, um, row, uh, a lot of rowers, right? Um, you can have a crew of five for it. Yep. Cool. We have a crew too. Wow. That will be you. Yeah, oh. that's us. <laughs> We are the well, crew. I mean, until we find some corpses somewhere. Excellent. Yes. That will be mm. everybody but me. I already did my job. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, if you take it out on the open ocean, you will have to have someone who is a navigator, which, you know, requires the skipper ability. Requires. <laughs> requires. <laughs> Give me my three wins. I've done match with that so far. <laughs> You can, you can. I have picked up a lot of various things for this group. I am not picking up Skipper. Oh, so you want to pick up Skipper stuff? <laughs> no, no. I, was like, I finally have two dots and a skill. No, I do not want to pick up anything else. I would like to focus on maybe making potions better or something. Punk. <laughs> the Captain Eldred is what I'm hearing. No, so, you're yeah. Captain Stefano. <laughs> I mean, you could call her Captain Eldred if you want. I'm not. I'm not king shaming. Like, I mean, I I do a pretty terrible. I mean, I do a pretty decent job of pathfinding, but a pretty terrible job of sailing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got two dice. Whatever. I guess you'll just have to. That's that's the other reason I'm not helping with the uh, the navigation rolls. <laughs> you'll have to buy someone to help you out. I guess. Um, We're buying or, people now? Or, alternately, we could just blackmail them. That or extort works too. them. Wait, help us or die? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cuts down on all that, you know, vague, nasty feeling about buying people. <laughs> mm. How did I end up with it's this? so much room? better. <laughs> I used to be a good person. I used I'm to help sure people. That... And I'm then not you sure that's true. Group. I did. I did. I was a midwife. I was a like a town apothecary. I helped with several different things. Yeah. And I used to be a doctor. doctor. It I all too falls have apart with several different things. We did vision quests. It was fun. And now, now I'm out here just buying people. Apparently. <laughs> no, we're trying not to buy them. That was... Oh, I see. <laughs> That would be wrong and expensive. <laughs> so I suppose we're setting out, aren't we? Yeah. Yep. Let me know if we see any corpses on the river, just, you know, in case. Uh, and since you are actually following a river for this part of the trip, you don't have to roll navigation. All you have to do is uh, row, row, row your boat gently up the stream. Fortunately, Gestaki is here. Yes, yes we have yes, a Gestaki. Unless someone wants to try and set sail, but there's not going to be a whole lot of wind because of the dense forests. Or even with the, um, the canopy of the trees might not give us enough room. Yeah, the... No, it's it's the, this is not a very big river. It's it's more a stream than a river, really. Okay, well down we go. Yep. Yeah. So I, it sounds like we don't actually need the all of us to actively do anything to sail the ship. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, yes, that's well. Well, you need people to row the the thing if you want to get anywhere. I have, I have the, I have absolute faith in Gestapi's rowing abilities. I have seen him row many times. 
He will uh, put us back into it. He's like, he got us through the swamp. He can get us through this river. Ah, mm -hmm. feats of strength. Right, mm -hmm. right. I will. Uh, I will assist with water, lending him my moral support. Oh, Tonight. that's so kind of you. Can, can, I, I, I mean, this... don't don't a lot of us have a, a decent stone? That yeah, already just wants you. to see if he can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna because if Gustav he can do it, there's no way I'm gonna sweat my ass off rowing us down this river all day. I'm gonna say it's gonna be hard for a single person to do it <laughs> with this size of <laughs> boat and this many people. You should probably be two, sir. Hard Artigue. Artigue. Although I, I, feel, I feel like I feel like Artigue might uh, might 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 start feeling feeling some kind of way about watching Brittany sort of encouraging Stocky and admiring his muscles and you know. <laughs> Gosh, girl, whatever, whatever whatever keeps him working hard, fine. Like awesome. <laughs> uh huh. Just there, like my muscles are better. <laughs> yeah. He's very secure in the fact that his muscles are better. <laughs> um. But I suppose if we have to have two people and El Dorito doesn't want to do it, I suppose. I have a stone of row. two. I yeah, mean, I, I have a stone of there. three. What do you, what, what do you? Look at him go. Ugh. Get oh, but there. I didn't actually factor in Lady Brittany's uh, potential water roll here. So I get another die. <laughs> Maybe that's the six you need. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Deidre should definitely be shouting and encouraging him, too. She has a three water. She knows how to do this. Also, she knows... Manipulate Kostaki. Yeah, yes. Probably. She has like a three relationship to the man, so... I feel like I'm mostly just distracted in Kostaki. Yes. <laughs> he gets another die here from, from uh, her help. So, okay. Lots of lots of success. He's gonna be able to to pull his part of the, but he's gonna get tired. Artie, you get your ass in there. Yeah. Okay, I'll roll I, my. I three encourage Artie. You you could do it. I have faith in you. Thank you, Safano. <laughs> I. Well, you know, I've got a success there. Actually, hold on. A goat roll water for Safano. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I'll. I'll roll. I'm the one yelling at him anyway. <laughs> I'm encouraging. You're Look very that. encouraging. Two successes from Sifana's encouragement so I can get right there. two more dice off that? Hold up. I'm yep. rolling. Yep. And get one, uh, one another one from, from uh, uh, Aldrida's uh, wisdom. She is the wisdom here. I, I, Straight I, I, brow beating. Hey, I, well, two successes with a six then. We'll take it. I'll allow it. And with a six, you don't even get particularly tired. How about that? That's because my cheerleaders are the best. I don't know. Like, yes. Thanks. It's, it's just sitting there with the bug out. It's good to pick the winning team. Because <laughs> 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 I'm rubbing his shoulders like, you got this, champ. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> the two muscly men of this group are uh, rowing, so they are sweating. At least Gustaki is sweating a lot more than... And I think he's a bit grumpy over the fact that he's sweating more than Sir Artigue because that doesn't seem right. He's supposed to be the strongest here. He's supposed to be the strongest. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. I would just stand here enjoying the show. That's what I'm gonna do. There is plenty of... A um... good show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is, is plenty of um, biceps and triceps and... and uh, uh, back muscles and abs on display. <laughs> I can tell Is you that. anybody steering? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I nominate Bedonius. Eventually, Bedonius turns around and is like, guys, you want to you wanna turn? Oh. Oh, I see. I, I, I got it. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> 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 Who is staring this thing anyway? <laughs> I have a wind of one. I don't notice these things. <laughs> Would that be a wind roll? Yeah, why not? Alright. Seems reasonable. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a better shot than I am. Oh no. 
The okay, gun is a little distracted by the gun show. <laughs> Nobody's gonna get clotheslined and end up overboard. <laughs> <laughs> you just sort of veering back and forth a little bit. <laughs> so once, well, once we're once we're sort of well underway, uh, Rithidi is going to buttonhole Eldrita a little bit, and see if she can convince her to come to like I don't know as as far away from the, uh, the crowd watching the. Uh, rowers as, uh, as she can I guess the deck isn't that big but clearly demonstrating a desire for a short private conversation Neldrita's not picking up those cues it seems Stuff. <laughs> what? What? I'm so sorry. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm distracted by puppy, so I just put her in the box and she's barking all over the place. So I apologize. Oh, no. uh, what did I miss? Uh, Brittany is attempting to buttonhole Aldrita for a private conversation. Oh, yes. Then... At least as private as could be had on the deck of a sloop. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no. Ca is there a cabin or a cargo area underneath at all? Not really, no. Well, okay. like cargo area, yes. Can we go down to the cargo area and sit there and talk, or is that not a thing? No, I suppose you can. It's not a terribly big cargo area. Well, I don't think we have any cargo in it, so okay. You don't. <laughs> we'll go down and do that. All right. You should fix that. Mm -hmm. With corpses. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping there is something you would be willing to help me with once we get to the forest proper. Okay. I should be better at this sort of thing than I am, given I'm a potion maker, but I'm really only good at identifying poisonous things, and I'm hoping you can help me find some flowering gar garlands while we're in there. You want flowers? Garlands, specifically. Okay. What kind of properties, or do you, does it not matter? Uh, not poisonous. Um, not not going poisonous. To give somebody a contact. Um, the sort of thing it's safe to handle with their skin. You you want a gift? Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can do that. That's no problem. Well, I don't know this forest very well, but um, the local Safinians have lots and lots of gardens. So my guess is that this forest will also be a little lush with things. We'll see. That's what I was figuring. I mean, uh, it's not really the case on uh, Palamux, and I was not wanting to be messing around with plant life in Peritorna. <clears throat> No problem. Thank you. Okay. Any colors or like favorite things in mind? <sighs> I should really know his favorite color, shouldn't I? I mean, maybe. I mean, I like red, but um... <clears throat> mean what does he normally wear as far as colors he doesn't shower very often so he showers more than me so i does, think that's the does, important part does Artie you have an obvious favorite color that i would be aware of um teal let's go with teal yes obviously teal you've clearly picked up on that from <laughs> the teal decorations on his veil there you go I assume it's partial to teal. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can find. It's going to be okay. I pat her shoulder. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, this would scandalize both my parents at Middle Bay for completely different reasons. Why? Aren't you both noble? Well, you see, um... My mother wanted me to be a course son like her. Uh, father, well, uh, this is, this tradition is something the commoners near the village where I grew up used to do. Uh, oh, is this, is this like a proposal thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was just, it was something that happened every spring, the, uh, young women in the village would go into the forest and they would return uh, with uh, flowering garlands to put together somehow uh, and then would be 
a gift for the person they were interested in. Usually there was fights uh, because, you know, uh, maybe some of them would uh, be interested in the same person, but like, so that would be a way to work that out too. Uh, but I see. Yeah. Just, okay. just for the commoners, uh, not, not for not anything I was ever involved in. Well, this will be fun. I have a side quest. I have my new temporary goal for the thing. I love it. <laughs> so I, I feel like you're also helping women connect, find their power by connecting to nature, perhaps. There you go. Ah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, I will, we'll, we'll take a look and see what the forests of Safina have to offer. Then I can say that the chalice is empty again because, uh, oh, yes. Oh, why did I do that? Uh, wrong button. Because uh, Eldrina now has uh, uh, nine faith dice. How'd I get? How'd I get nine? Oh You're my gonna God. help uh, a woman connect with etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I started with seven. Yes. So you got two. Oh. Okay. That was that was all that existed in the chalice. I understand. Sheesh. Let's do some magic. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hang on, I'll ask the goddess where the best uh, where the best flowering ba uh, garlands are. Um, I'm pretty sure I can imbue stuff with power uh, with that sort of uh, role. So, what are we doing? Like a fortune telling thing here? No, 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 no. Um, oh, moon magic. No, no, no. Can't I with potion making though? Couldn't I make this like a little magic temporary garland, just like a oh. potion and set in a garland? Yes, but <laughs> like <laughs> always reply. Uh, first of all, because you want to do a potion. Well, it's just instead of a potion, it would be in a garland format. So, like you know, give him good luck, maybe or something. Yeah. Instead of an imbibable, it would be a wearable. A wearable potion. <laughs> that's that's an artifact, I would argue. Well, this would be a, a temporary effect. It wouldn't be something that would last. They would like be, you know, smells really good until it smells wear off. Well, so maybe it's of, like um, a single single use magic item, perhaps. Yeah, like, like a uh, like a potion. Different. Like a potion. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, technically, black powder is not something that you drink, right? Uh, <laughs> just, yep. You'd hope not. <laughs> you hope not. <laughs> just something to you think about. Buried. Yeah, some really sprinkling for flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Something's kind of real wrong. <laughs> yes. Um, what kind of what kind of ingredients do you have? I mean, right well, now? that's that's what we're gonna go. Well, that's do. what we're gonna go do we're in go this forest. Wander so. the forest ah. and gather flowering, Fair pretty enough. flowers that aren't poisonous. Look, it's a fun like side a quest. Loser. Make make uh, make Artigue some kind of enchanting garland. Garland. It could be like uh, some sort of oils that you find that's uh, laced in the, the garland that seeps in through the skin. There you go. Mm, there you go. I like it. Moisturizes. Right. Moisturizes. <laughs> Makes him extra virile, you know? Well, we're going to make a baby yet, Stefanu. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to turn the garland into Viagra. I don't know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what uh, we're doing yet. I just thought it would be fun. Uh, I apologize. For I mean, no, no. It is. <laughs> Fine. We'll see what we find. Yeah. Shenanigans. Yeah. You, you, you can do almost anything with your apothecary uh, uh, abilities. So, you know, yeah, why not? I, I'm just going to set a difficulty. That's, that's all. But if it's something not terribly complicated, it's going to be a low difficulty. Of course, being without a lab will raise the difficulty a little yes. bit. Because you are on a sloop, in fact, and mixing <laughs> ingredients on a sloop is not the ideal conditions. Well, I mean, we will be in the forest. Still not is... the ideal conditions. No. But, <laughs> but at least not moving. I do have a pot. I have... <laughs> oh. All right, we need to put that on the wish list. We need to uh, steal an alchemy lab from someone. A like traveling a alchemy lab? Are you kidding me? Well, you just need like a real alchemy alchemy lab and like a cart. 
All right, you I just put, you the, guys, uh, put the alchemy cart. lab in the cart and... Well, going over bumpy roads and stuff is not great for alchemy. Right. <laughs> really isn't. Well, I presume I hear, you don't I hear you all used to have a cart, it, but it <laughs> got left on Rajura. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes, there mm -hmm. was. And there a donkey. Was <laughs> it was a donkey, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was not the best horse, let's say. Right. It wasn't a horse, so I could get it off the boat sooner. <laughs> yes, yes, and and then and then someone took it. It was in fact Lady Tarlisi who stole it, eventually. Anyway, um, Erdig, you pulled a card. <laughs> <laughs> After working your way up the river for quite a while. Um, you are going to find yourselves in the evening approaching a village, and um, it is called Vindelhem. Hmm. It's a very small village, much like Grald. They're probably like, the fuck is a slip doing here? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Do they even have docks or uh ish? <laughs> Do we want to stop and see if they know they... anything about the Oracle situation since that's what we're kind of investigating? I might be good to talk to some locals. Yeah, I can hurt. Forest and okay. everything. I'd like to stop rowing. Teal colored flowers, perhaps? Yeah, I, mean, I might I might require a couple of more scrunch rolls for the entire day. It's like two shifts, I think, so that that's uh, uh -huh. reasonable. I'm not gonna spend fate dice on Gistaki this time, ha! Huh? Mm. Come on, Mikhail. Two success, one success. I need one more. I feel, but you know, DJ is his fan. She will, she will yeah. give him yeah. one more die, so he gets to. Okay. All right. Uh, can I have my cheering squad activate? Yeah. Uh, you can do this. So funny, yeah. Valtrida. I can't do it without you psyching me up. You got this. You're the man. I believe in you. I do not <laughs> believe more in dice you. For me. I'm terrible, <laughs> oh and my I God. can't help but you. But Lady Brittany gave him three dice. So, and then he lost one because Aldrida is very distracting. Uh, probably with the trips one. about um, mm -hmm. baby making. Baby making, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, too tired or you can't make babies. What, Eldrita? <laughs> hey. <laughs> so that's two bonus die he is here for, for Sir RDG rowing. And one I, I from six. Uh, Stefano? Yeah, oh, I yes. got a six. Oh, that's actually two more, so. All right, then. The six is always So four two. more die. Maybe I can, you know, turn this around. Sorry, I took one away from you. Oh, it's all right. You tried. That's what's important. Woo oh, my God. Teamwork makes a dream work, everybody. Team yes. Work. Unlike, um... Okay. Unlike, uh... Gistaki, you're not even tired. After this. Yeah, no, this just, yeah. Day. Fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> You have, to, you, know, you have to keep up your conditioning if you want to smash Korean heads for like an, a whole eight hour shift. Like, <laughs> right. It's a lot of swinging. Yeah, yeah Gistaki so is like. Gistaki is going to be crying <sighs> into his beer and sick. <sighs> at the end of this day. Yeah, he's just sweating and. Uh, uh, he just needs his arms to catch a break for a little while already. Ugh. <sighs> You know, Deidre, you, Deidre, you, you, you can massage some of that out. Now she that definitely not will do that, yes. <laughs> she will massage it out. In many ways. Um, she's, she's good what at massaging up, things up. out. Right. Massaging things out is her specialty. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> this game. This game, I swear. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, Vindelheim is not a very big village. Uh, it's all of, like, about slightly smaller than Grald, I guess. Uh, and uh, I guess you will have your first little... Oh. Because your sloop is, in fact, 
like the stream I'm, I'm being generous here with a map because like the stream continues upwards so I'm, but it's I'm guessing so we can't really go much farther no no you you can it's, it's just not deep enough for boats I probably should have asked about that before I bought a boat <laughs> canoes possibly but not for long even that if you ask the locals which I'm sure you do um <laughs> So really, you're on foot from on here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm. I'm hoping we can negotiate with them to let us anchor in their stream. <clears throat> yeah, they're all kind of like looking at you like you're complete weirdos because you're <laughs> complete weirdos. I mean, to be uh, fair, we are. children Accurate. are coming out to look at you and like point at at the weird tattoos on two of your members. We're traveling oh, it's, it's... troubadours, Lady B. <laughs> Sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, what is that? Like pointing to one of Sifana's tattoos or, or one of Deidre's tattoos. And uh, I mean, there are a few people here who are strong, but they wouldn't look like like Gistaki because they, they have different bulks. Uh, so it, even his physiognomy is weird. And Sir Ardegu with his... Is he wearing his armor? Uh, yeah, oh, not if he was rowing. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not while rowing. Okay. I feel like yeah, he's, he... he's not wearing his shirt anymore either. <laughs> no, definitely not. Not if Kostaki was shirtless, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and Bodonius, who is all like. Finn? <laughs> <laughs> definitely not helping rowing. And, and, and Lady Brittany, who's also not very bulky, I think there's going to be a couple of, of, you know, very maternal uh, housewives who, Telling me I need wives to eat. who are, are very concerned about how, how, how thin you are. And, well, dear, well, we, I think we need to get, get some flesh on these bones here. And um, they will <laughs> prepare proper meals to uh, make sure that you get some flesh on your bones. That goes for Aldrina too, by the way. Clearly. I'm, I'm here to help with the kitchen uh, portion of this because I'd like to take a look at their you know, kitchens. gardens or anything like that. Yeah, their kitchens, basically. Oh, yeah, so. they have a very well-stocked garden, just just like the folks in Grald. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the smell of various uh, herbs and uh, seasoning... Uh, materials. Uh, it's it's uh, probably the most exotic mix of scents from a fresh garden that you've ever felt, except maybe in Graal, because you know it's Safina. It's it's this is this is how it is everywhere. Perfect. Well, I will um, ask them if it is okay if I uh, if I help them make dinner, but also um, utilize their kitchen to, you know, cook up something special. Well, dear, uh, are we sharing recipes here? Uh, we are so much looking forward to, to having a taste of whatever, whatever interesting cuisine you bring. Oh, I'm going to make a drink. A drink? Well, help mm -hmm. yourself. Um, and and uh, there will be like uh, three of them watching you prepare it because this is very interesting. Okay. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm probably talking up our uh, our intrepid busking crew that we definitely have. Um, yes. You know, Pedonius, <laughs> the living statue. Deidre, the most graceful dancer. Uh, probably less talking up Gustaki who needs some rest. <laughs> yes. yes, he needs some rest. Amazing. He has three exhaustion right now. He's like, nope. Did we, did we settle on a name for a uh, traveling name for Artigue? Because I'm not going to call him Artigue. Yeah, I'm mean, Arthur. I'm... Yeah. Mm. It's a strong choice. Real clever. <laughs> and, this here is, and this here is Arthur, the strongest man in Venheim. Maybe all of Safina. There you go. Well. This we gotta see, and soon enough, word will spread outside oh, the village, and you will get <laughs> trappers and uh, 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 farmers who come from outlying areas. If if it doesn't take them more than an hour to get here, they will get here. 
uh, to, <laughs> I imagine to we're probably the most this, interesting this thing that has happened in this village for like years. <laughs> exactly. No, this is this is the it's like the the big thing. This big news. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing strangers from faraway lands who speak funny and and look funny are gonna do funny things in the village common. They need to be fed. And and also they need to watch our boat while we're gone. So let's be nice to them. Uh, who wants to support Deidre's um, uh, busking attempt here? I'm putting one fate die in for her and uh, fire three, I guess. I will uh, happily do so by talking her up. Very well. Oh. That's a die. I'm Arctic in the kitchen. will perform feats of strength. Uh, you, well, aside from actual feats of strength, you, you can't. But, you know. Oh, no, I understand. Not the skill feats of strength. Yes. The unskilled feats of strength. Right? <laughs> the unskilled feats of strength. Are you just picks, 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 picks things up and breaks them with no artistry? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but sure possibly otherwise... offer to arm wrestle any of the locals who want to, maybe. In sure. other words, you cannot bend iron bars or lift the portcullis. Or rather, you, you could try it, but you don't get to add fake dice for it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're doing the thing there, and that's going to add another die, and Lady Brittany adds another die, so I guess we have, uh... Bedonia's going to be a living statue and hold real still? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hold real still. I mean, haven't you seen I... those those buskers who do the, the statue mm -hmm. act? Where they... mm -hmm. Would that be a stone <laughs> roll? I don't know. I don't know, probably. Let's start drawing on it. <laughs> no, there we go. Imitate the mountain. Or is it a Do water it. check for not being disturbed by the... I don't know. It's something. And you give a die, so here we are. We have a lot of dice here. One, two, three... Three extra dice, at least. Four extra dice, I think. For, um... Or is it three extra dice? For her... Three. Four dice, so seven. Busk the shit out of this place. Uh, that's what she's oh. doing. Oh. No, Ooh. not really. She has a single wow. success. That's, wow. uh, that's some terrible busking tonight. She ruins the show. <laughs> How can she? Um. So. I guess. I when guess purchasing she something, roll for this ability instead of your level of wealth. She has a single success. The Safinias are kind of nice, though, so that is actually going to be enough to buy you, uh, like, in any other place, on any other island, uh, you would have gotten porridge for supper and sleeping in a stable with that roll. So they become clear to them why we are in this small town in the middle of the <laughs> But you are here, and it's Safina, and I'm generous, so you're actually going to get a feast. And sleep in real beds. They're really just they're really just taking pity on us and trying to like boost like, our wow. egos. Yeah, good yeah. job, guys. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. They Keep are. trying. And and uh, also You'll do better at the next village. I mean <laughs> look at Deidre and, and Lady Brittany and, and Eldrida and Bodonius and, and I mean Sifano. You're you're particularly Sifano, you're so scrawny. Like this night, Sifano, as you're eating there, like you're not allowed to leave the table. They are here. Oh, here! Have another. Have another pastry. I, I imagine just like a team of grandmothers, like yes. you know, <laughs> and they're all big and bulky and could wrestle Stefano down into the sea by just blowing at him. Uh, so he's gonna take another pastry, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Probably gets his cheeks pinched. <laughs> oh, they're so red. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you can see that isn't covered in tattoo. Oh, isn't, isn't this lovely, Stefano? Such great hospitality. This is delicious. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what was I don't look visibly sick. I only <laughs> am sick. <laughs> <laughs> like. Mm, mm. Mm. Mm, so stuff. Food coma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there will be a food coma for a lot of you. 
I like it. Attempt to look around the village to see if I can figure anything else, but uh, it doesn't seem I'm going to have that opportunity. <laughs> no, no, not much. I'm uh, I'm hoping I could trade some some travelers' tales, mostly true ones this time, because I felt kind of bad for lying to that uh, that guy driving the, the cart before, who was very credulous. Uh, to see if somebody will tell me about some teal flowers that might grow in these parts. Uh, yeah, they will give you some some uh, advice about flowers. I mean, they have flower beds in their very well appointed gardens, so um, I'm sure there's a lot. Of, like, if you mention that you're going into Tokma, that's gonna probably provoke some reactions. Uh, but right now, they're not expecting anything like that. They just think that you're very eccentric people who are busking out here, which is great. That last time they had a visitor like that was maybe a year ago. Really? Anyone we would have heard of? Um, let's see now. Let's see now. The, the other year we had uh, a couple of buskers and a merchant coming through, uh, picking up some some herbs and uh, selling off some uh, some nice uh, uh, woodcraft and uh, some nice uh, uh, iron um, ore. Uh, straight from Transmira, um, and uh, the year before that, when was it we had that little scrawny fella who came through with uh, uh, with that other peddler? A couple of years by gone by now. Uh, he he wouldn't start talking, that's for sure. Uh, foreign parts he came from. Wouldn't stop. Ta I'm sorry. Wouldn't stop talking. Is that what he said? Yep. I know somebody like that. Yeah, uh, came from uh, down on the continent, if I recall correct. What is so interesting? I've hardly met anyone from that, from such far sailed places. Yeah, no, he was he was a, a, a funny little thing, that's for sure. I had to. Um, Mind him, because uh, he was far too scrawny for his own good, you understand? Hmm. Was he... Well, what brought him to this part of the world? I mean, merchants I can understand. Apparently, he was just going with his friend, the peddler. They were... Uh, what did it say? Torn the islands? Hmm. Not sure what that means. Interesting. I will proceed to, uh, you know, continue to have my face stopped with various things to put meat on my bones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, you can't stop until you've tried her pie. Oh, no, wait. But but exactly. Stop until you tried that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, and so. But I, I imagine, like, it would be it would be low key offensive if you don't try everyone's pies. Yes, mm. yes, you have to try everyone's pies. That's what you have to do. <laughs> That's the rule. But at least it's nice and peaceful, and um, everybody, you know, uh, the local craft beers again, amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, Safinum beers are, are the best. Can't go wrong with Safinum beers. Unfortunately, um, you can't stay out in the village common for too long because of the, the ensuing rain, but, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay, I guess. Uh, Gistaki will sleep very deeply that night. Enjoy your peace and quiet, said the GM. Ah, uh, for no reason at all. <clears throat> <laughs> all right, well, enjoy my peace and quiet. Do we want to ask about the oracles before we leave? Or... Yeah, I figured we'd ask in the morning. Okay. Still don't really know how to bring that up, even. Like, hey, uh, got any good oracles lately? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can lead into it with my fortune telling ability, and that I'm looking for other um, fortune tellers or, or oracles in the area, which I am. It's all true. <laughs> That sounds so, responsible. And then yeah, maybe yeah. I can sort of pivot to Lady B taking over the conversation from there. 
<laughs> that sounds like a water so check my for me with Eldrita for... helping out. Yeah. Eldrita will assist. I uh, roll two. Hey! Oh, right. Two successes. Nice. So that gives me five dice? Yes, it does. Look at that. Oh. Hey. I mean, that's that's all right. It's all right. It works. Two with a six. It's enough. They're, uh... I mean, villagers, like. <laughs> well, you are the initiator, so you win. Yay! Nice. Take that, Get villagers. Poor, poor villager. He tried so hard. <laughs> yeah, so they far. were they were initially kind of tight-lipped because you're weirdos from somewhere else. Uh, what were you, yo, oracles? What oracles? Well, I ask about fortune tellers, oracles. Yeah. Oh well, we heard the worst news down from uh, Teagold. You know, uh, the the oracle of Angzaz. They say she was killed. Oh, just we heard just the other day. Down. We just gotten into ten about that. Uh, just just after. I, they, yeah, they they say it was just the other day, uh, and, and I tell you, what is this world coming to, when uh, the faithful servants of the gods cannot go uh, unmolested? These are some dark times coming. Let me tell you. Do they have any local, um, you know, wise women or men or those yeah. involved in that field? Yeah, they have locals. Uh, the, there is uh, an old woman who um, uh, does prayers to Enki. Uh, once who, she has finished stuffing Safanu's face. W- once she's finished stuffing Safanu's face. Uh, <laughs> and there is an uh, uh, equally old chap who is um, sort of the, the village um, Tamu's devotee. He's... he's uh, He's not a priest per se, but he tries to be a lay person who who uh, tends to, you know, s- try to satisfy the god and and keep the soil fertile and, and things like that. So not a prostitute. No, no, he's not. Okay. No, th- you'd have probably to go to to Teagold and and some other places for that. Yeah. We did ask. <laughs> you did ask. Though, I mean, you know, it's since it's a sacred ritual for Tammuz, I'm sure he can be persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not exactly what we're looking for. This must be the most lecturer's adventurer group searching for the four <laughs> oracles ever. <laughs> well, maybe the uh, wise woman might know something about the, the uh, green eye. Okay. Are we uh, talking to them about the um, the verses or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, like, let's straight up show them. It's like, does this mean anything to you? Huh. Looks at it. Well, I mean, uh, looking over, looking over the, the ver- I had to bring up my, my English verses here as well so I can compare. Where did they even go? Oh, probably not in the maps folder. How about that? That's... Well, that makes perfect sense. It's pinned under adventurers. Right. That makes it much easier. Um. There it is. Hmm. And of course, this is the other sheet. There we are. Hmm. <sighs> Lot and leaves? What, what flowers children buy to blood? Uh, that does sound like the talk before us. Uh, Mistful seeds and all. Tallest tree, but lower still. I don't know about that. But I will say, most of us, you see, we, we don't venture too far into the talk with forest. And uh, I, I'd stay away from the deeper parts. Uh, they don't much cater for outsiders. Um, they? Hey, they. The locals. Wait, there's people in there? I don't know if I would call them people as such. Uh, 
beards. More like. Hmm. I mean, they're all, all sorts of stories of strange uh, deer-like people walking around and people uh, looking like uh, fish, perhaps. Uh, the very rock moving around. Goodness. Yeah, if you get too far in there, uh, you never know what can happen to you. So we, we stay in the outskirts even when we do go in. Oh, uh, that, that's unsensible. Yeah, we think so, yeah. Any precautions you're, you're taking even with the outskirts? I mean, the mystical seeds, they sound like they could be quite troublesome. That they can be. Uh, always smear yourself in plenty of fat. Then they don't get much traction. Mm. So volume works fine, really. Explosive stuff? <laughs> well, you don't want to go close to an open flame. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Oh, no, of course not. Uh, see, you said the locals don't take kindly to outsiders. Um, is there anything in particular they like? Could demonstrate we mean no harm? <laughs> in case we encounter one of them, I mean. Uh, I can't say to be sure. I, I haven't stayed in long enough to make a fuss, you understand? Uh, of course. There, there are tales of uh, people going in there and never coming out, and we tend to... Uh, attribute that to them disturbing the locals. Right. Like sense. Yeah, it could be anything, really. Ghosts. Uh, oh, let it be ghosts. Spirits of the uh, forest. <laughs> plants themselves. Maybe trees walking. Um, you hear all sorts of rumors from people who uh, come out of there. Well, hopefully we'll have a tale or two to tell when we come back this way. So you are, in fact, going in there. Well, that's brave, are you? Um, well, uh, if you stay in there for longer than, uh, say, a month, can we keep the sloop? <laughs> I'd say that's safe. Yeah, if we're not out in a month, we're probably dead. <laughs> Reasonable. That sounds mighty kind of you. We appreciate your hospitality. And uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, it's been such a lovely experience having some some outsiders here. Doesn't happen often, does it? Um, this night, Eldrida, when you are sleeping, you dream. Ooh. Yes. You see, you dream of your native uh, Trinsmere, and this is really the completely wrong music for this, isn't it? That's, <laughs> That's okay. Do I have... I have an imagination, too. Oh my god. You do? I do. Um, you dream of your native Trinsmere and its mountain peaks and uh, it's um, a wild lands high away from you know weird forests and, and oceans maybe uh, and you see in your dream an area you haven't really traveled in that much I think possibly hard to tell I think your mind thinks Rung this must be in Rung somewhere okay a lake that looks just like a sheet, like a mirror, like a sheet of glass, reflecting stars and the moon above. You see uh, people there, a procession of uh, dedicated uh, priests. Must be for Inashtar, maybe? You're not sure? Okay. But then behind them, 
Maybe you're dreaming that you're one of these priests, actually. Okay. And as the ceremony is going on and, you know, the incense is lit and, and people are all looking out towards the lake to, to, to see it reflect the fates from heaven, there is a scream. And you look around and you see the senior cleric grab his own throat, blood gushing out, pumping from the arterial vein as he falls down and then one more screams the shadows around you they're moving one by one priests are being killed and then you feel the dagger in your own abdomen and as you wake up you hear Fundibero's voice avenge them do I get uh an idea of where in Rung, like what lake we could be looking at, like maybe up by Glax or something there? Something, yeah, yeah, could be. <laughs> and if they're killing priests, they're probably... All right, I wake up and go find Lady B. <laughs> what? You're going to think this sounds like assassins? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Couldn't be. Did this... Uh... Did the way the people were dying in the dream look like it was some trained killers, perhaps? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I go find Lady B. <laughs> I knock on Artigue and Lady B's door. <coughs> on second, need clothes. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Not a thing I haven't seen many times before, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, like, open the door. What? I need to What's talk wrong? to you about the your people. Artie, you can stay. That's fine. I just come on in and shut the door behind me. <laughs> I'm awake. What's up? Um, I was sent a um, dream of the past uh, via magic. And um, it appears what I would guess is a group of assassins. Uh, just killed a bunch of um, priests, probably of uh, in Ashtar or another cult group uh, up in Transmira. Do you know of any orders that have gone that way? Um, other Can than you... other than my own, I uh, can't really say. Can you keep but... an eye out for orders that have gone that way? Yeah. Uh, I information of that sort tends to be on a need-to-know basis unless, uh, unless or until it happens. If I Look, encounter... It already happened, so... Right. Well, if, if we run into one of the sails from the area, I can ask. Um, but uh, that has dangers of its own. Well, I need to find out what happened and who was behind it. And um, I need to then go take care of those people. So it was uh, some place in Transmira. There are priests. Um... Mm -hmm. Likely rung, uh, if my memory serves me correctly of where we were at. Rung, um, interesting. That that might prove difficult. Uh, well, either very either more difficult or less because the. Uh, the, the order tends to be strong in the area. I didn't train them myself, but um, <laughs> many did. If it's in Ashtar, hold up. Uh, isn't she also like the priestess of fire? Yep. Uh, Lust I, I and unbridled warfare. Where? Winds of the oh. West. <laughs> Speaking of which. I'm, uh, I'm glad to see uh, Artigui has, has learned to operate flint and tinder in the time since we were there. <laughs> you should have seen that. What, uh, it's very hard to light something, fires. But wasn't there something in the... I'm looking at the, um, the prophecy right now about a red eye. Could that be... Rung has a bunch of cliffs. And in my red eye in Crown Cliff Covered... Uh, we think that's King's Cliff on... Uh, Alamox. Palamux, thank you. Off on the west, near Mount Bektar? Question mark. I think. 
You you've been to Mount Vector, um Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is something to think about to put a pin in, maybe. Uh, well, my thought is is if they're killing priests, they're probably oracles among them or they're I mean they're out there killing priests and they killed, you know, um uh, other orders before, so Yeah, it's the Shangri Light MO. Wipe out all the priests. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know if these were Shagulites or not. They resurrected Shaggles, so they're in bed with Shaggles somehow, and I could just call them Shagulites as an easy mental shortcut. Okay, that's valid. The new Shagulites. Do we, do we actually think the Shagulites are involved in this somehow? In resurrecting Shaggle, absolutely. No, oh, in the uh, in the Kellens, I mean. That happened around the time they start. They resurrected Shaggle, absolutely. Reason being, I know where one is. Is it Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, where's... I was ordered to make sure he didn't die, but uh, if I is don't he... happen to be there, uh, nothing really I could do, and I have new orders now, so... Oh, something to think about. But if we're losing priests this rapidly, I'm just concerned about all of our eyes closing before the beacon f fails or whatever. Well, we're literally on our way to go to one. I, I know. Don't, like, I don't have a way to do this any faster. Yeah, spe speaking of which, um, you think there's anything you could do to figure out, like, what's the deal with the the, 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 the locals that deeper in the woods to, like, convince them to maybe not kill us? Or kidnap us, or make it such that we never return to lose our sloop? I mean, I'm not great with talking with people. I don't know much about these people in general. I'm not I meant like more a... the, the thing you do with the cards and the, like, looking at the water and, like, the f finding out about things. Oh, yeah, that I can do. Let me go get Stefano. He loves doing this crap. <laughs> I go All knock right. on Stefano's door. Does this mean I have to put on pants? <laughs> <laughs> Fanu. It's, it's a rough world out there. Only if you want to. I... Yeah, but Fine, I'm not putting on pants. Gonna do some uh, fortune telling magic for our future. Do you want to help? Sure. Okay. Great. We're going on a vision quest, Stefanu. So we go back to wherever I'm staying, and I set up a little circle, and we smoke the last of my sinkala, and we get high, and we do some fortune telling, Mikhail. All right. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing in terms of fortune telling? This is fun. Um, uh, my I... answer is you're all going to die. No, wait, that's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Reading the wrong game. <laughs> oh, my options, but this isn't again. called Cthulhu. Oh my God. Yeah. We're not playing Cthulhu here. <laughs> Let me okay. open the, uh, divination. Yep. Um, takes one scene, detailed glimpses of the future. Every successful die allows you to ask the story hitter a short question of what is coming. So we roll for uh, wind and at least one fake die. Um, I only right. have one in fortune telling, so I think that's all that I can spend, right? Yep, so that, that gives is me correct. Three, that gives so me I'm gonna, six. I'm going to roll three for my wind for an assist. Can, okay. you, can he do that? Yeah, okay. Can I, can I help her by saying nice things? <laughs> you can, yes. I'll allow it. Are you doing actual magic or is this fortune telling? No, this is telling. Yeah. Right. So pseudo magic. That's two extra dice for you for having uh, Sifanu and uh, Sifanu is is making magic, uh, not magic, but um, arcane uh, markings around you to facilitate the the winds of fate to speak to you. And uh, Lady Brittany is doing what exactly? Uh, telling Eldrita how clever she is and how she's certain that she will gain valuable insights and... Encouragement. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. 
that gives me five dice then, two for my win, two for the bonus, and one for the fate die? That's correct. Okay. I smoke hey. Wow. Okay then. That is three successes. Woo! And so, that means three uh, questions. Oh, Short do the questions. sixes give her an extra one? Nope. They just no. stop me from Ooh. taking issues. Um, so I get three questions on, and I get detailed answers on them, um, basically? Yep. Uh, also, an interesting side note about fortune telling, that you can proclaim a prophecy if you have this ability. Uh, it takes a scene, uh, and it costs one fate die for every stanza. Um, and you don't roll the dice, it just goes into the chalice. That's a fun side note. But anyway, huh. you are going to ask questions to me now. <sighs> Um, I want to ask, uh, tell me about the people of Tokme Forest and, like, who, who are they? Hmm. Okay. I cannot lie. Um. Aha. Uh -huh. But I can I'll be ambiguous and cryptic. Yes. You see, Here academics you're... are good at that. What was that? Here academics are good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you see in your visions of the future strange, strange beings. They are. In one way, it's not so strange for Krakoria. You're used to wolfkin from Transmira, right? They're half humans, half wolves. So the notion that there will be half humans, half other types of animals or things out there might not be entirely surprising. So these are half what? Um, fish, trees, four-footed hoof animals and stone, perhaps? Okay. That is I all you're going to get in that of those. question. Yeah. I'm saying, say that again? That's, that's it for that question? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, what, um... What might we do to have them see us as friendly, to to have to be there to be friends with them. Ooh, let's see now. That's an excellent question. Uh, hmm. I mean, I have some ideas about the rock people, but well, I'm thinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Flesh and wood will guard the eye. Bark of bark will bear him beyond. And then, I, so I'm really feeling like flesh and wood will guard the eye. Like, could be treant protectors guarding the oracle or something along those lines. But I don't really know. Um, singing. Is she singing? Singing. Um, this is a bit confusing to you because you see many different things and you don't know which belongs to which necessarily but singing you hear singing in your ears you will see magic working dispel in fact some kind of dispelling and motherly nurturing comforting in a way <clears throat> is there so a particular my... magical signature that she recognizes as to who is doing the dispelling mm, I don't think it's going to be that precise Fair. okay so then for my third question it will be um... might as well just go for the gold here uh where 
is the green cool. eye. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd go that direction. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> okay. And I have to be more precise than the verses. Uh, you will see before you a valley in the shadow of the Black Mountain. Black Mountain? What's a Black Mountain? And you will have an amazing view of the marshes from it. Marshes? Wait, are we even in the right place then? Yes. Well, where's the Black Mountain then? Is that big that big thing there? It's Alan? I think it's the big Black Mountain. And an amazing view of the marshes. And Tokmay Forest is filled with some marshes as well. Right? Well, water and trees will get you a marsh somewhere. Does tech does tectonic sums allow you to speak at range? Like could our rocky party members uh, reach out? <laughs> To the Black Mountain, maybe. Yes, so but if, at higher difficulty. If it's in the if it's in the Black Mountains, then my suggestion would be to head the way toward the Black Mountains and like that watery area, maybe to the east or something. Okay, all right. <clears throat> A valley, valley near the shadow. When I come to. I will tell you guys a little bit about what I've seen so you can make your own predictions. But I will tell you that my thought is that, first of all, there are going to be different tribes of these peoples in the forest, and they want different things. That's going to be my interpretation. And I think one of those things that we can do is maybe busk for one of them, depending upon who they are. Um, we might also be able to break a curse by dispelling something. Uh, or something along those lines. And um, uh, the third one was comforting and care almost motherly. Like maybe there's somebody, I think that whoever we run into, those tribes are gonna want very different things from us, but we should approach them like they're, they're just normal people. I don't know how to communicate with them if they don't speak one of our languages though, would be the only, the major concern. Um, well, I mean, everyone speaks the language of love. There you go. I don't um, think that's what you meant by nurture. No. Oh. No. Well, I don't know then. Like motherly <laughs> nurturing. Um, no, that's weird. But I did have a vision of where the green eye is, and there is a um, valley near uh, in the shadow of, of a black mountain, um, and it is a clear view of marshes. So we're looking specifically for a valley. And in the stanzas... Did we move the timer up? Like, I'm staring at a very dark map trying to... Yeah, this is in the middle of the night. Like, she woke up in the middle of the night. No, like, I wouldn't actually be able to look at the map. Oh, <laughs> you mean that. Well, I guess I can do that because I'm nice. In the morning. Okay. Um, in the uh, verses, it mentions under the green eye in the tallest tree, but lower still than the lowest holly there. So there's mm -hmm. probably a tree in the valley and it's buried under there or something along, or she lives in the tree or I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. But first we find this valley. Way. Yep. Yep, we need to we're find the valley. We're still heading towards the mountain. Still looking for a valley. Yeah, my recommendation is when we get close enough to the mountain that our mountain magic folks, I think that's a great idea, start start maybe having a conversation with the mountain because that could take a while. What do you what do you want to ask the mountain? Where the green eye is. Well, what's Unless the tallest been, tree? Unless it's, it's been there for tree. a very long time, the mountain's not going to know where the green eye is. But so maybe <laughs> like where, where the valley is? Or the valley or the lowest, what is it? The In the tallest tree, but lower still. So maybe where the where are the roots of the tallest tree? Where do they, you know, something like that. Do, do mountains typically know about things growing on them? Like, can it say if there's holly? Probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If there, so, if I mean, they certainly a tree, yeah. probably holly, if holly kept growing in the same place. 
not really sure is Holly. I mean, perennial. some trees can, can live for <laughs> quite a while, so. They, they will even get noticed by the mountain by that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, trees can live a thousand years, especially big ones. Yeah. And that is probably enough to get noticed by the mountain. Oh, yeah. Well, I figure uh, the mountain probably notices you after a couple of hundred. Right? <laughs> so. All right. Well. So are we so. ready to set out into the actual forest forest? Yeah, so are we just going to cut straight across like so? I would head. Better approach. Oh, like, I would head more do we know toward the Black Mountain. Like I know we can see it on the map, but like, do we know where we're going? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a mountain over there. I figure it can't be that hard to find. Yeah, I would head more towards where, yeah, go where your stuff is. Like Pat, so we're gonna go like past the mountain toward the water area. I would say. Well, I mean, I don't think you can see a Black Mountain from where you are right now, but we can't I mean, see the peaks. You no. Because the line of sight, right? That you're uh, okay. under the trees. It's it's hard to see very far. All right. I, it's just but um, being a, a pathfinder and naturalist like yourself, Eldrida, waters in creeks and streams come from somewhere more higher, more highly elevated. Right. We were heading up river anyway, so we should maybe just consider following the river closer to the forest. So my suggestion would be to head into the forest and head south. And at that point, I will ask for a pathfinding roll because now, uh, since you are saying farewell to the villagers and going into the Tokma forest proper, it is time for someone to do some pathfinding. Yeah, so do anyone, I... need, anyone need any help getting lathered up with uh, fuzzard fat? Huh? Oh, Jesus. Huh? And this time That's I'm also going to be a bit spot mean. Spot on my back I missed. <laughs> oh, let me get that for you, Safana. <laughs> not going to say no. <laughs> I make sure that everyone is nice and covered. You know, all the unmentionables. You don't want to leave anything uncovered because then you'll have blood-sucking seeds there. And yeah, that's no fun on your tank. Yeah, they can get everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Gross. But, but Donius, you need help getting greased up? <laughs> So, question, is Artigue ticklish anywhere? I'm sorry, what? Is Artigue ticklish anywhere? Because I'm going to find out if he is. Ah, uh, absolutely. His ass is ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you not know that by now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All so, right. Well, mission accomplished. We're greased up. Uh, I will ask for, and I'm going to say that you cannot help her this time because this is a very confusing forest. Like, it's it's dense. It is the bushes with the mispel seeds. Like, the moment you get past that fringe close to the water and start making your way into the uh, forest proper, they're everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. So... And really annoying but you know uh, since you are in fact um all oiled up uh you you are fine they they will not attach to you they they probably try to but every time you just shake your clothes they just fall off i'm so glad we saved that fuzzard fat Blech. yep you okay. stink to high heaven but it works hopefully it'll keep predators away <laughs> mm-hmm we so Alvida has her uh, navigation roll to make, a pathfinder, so can... which is... And I think three... he uses my wind for this and difficulty two in forest, is that yep. correct? And a fate die, of course, I'm sure. Yep. So, so that gives me three. Yep. Well, that sucks. Let me see yeah. if I have an expertise with this gentleman, lady. Pretty sure I do. You should have an experience for this. Uh, My aunt taught me how aunt. to survive the forest of Trinsmira. For example. There we go. Okay, so I can reroll two? Yep. Great. That's there two it successes, is. which is what you needed to not, uh, you know, completely uh, lose your way. 
Okay. You will not uh, get lost in the forest. You will find the right way, but uh, everybody gets a point of exhaustion, and you will have some kind of mishap before this day is over. Uh, it could be that your food runs out. Um, it could be uh, that you are cold. Um, it could be that you have to climb something steep or go across a very, very uh, um, turbulent stream. Or you're attacked by some kind of hungry predator. What do we want to do here? I'd like to be attacked Monster. by a hungry predator! <laughs> hungry predator! Hungry, hungry predator! predator. <laughs> Everybody's voting sea for Sea monster, monster, round two. <laughs> I would like to be attacked by a hungry predator. Though. Everybody get a point of exhaustion, first of all. Like, we can't be that cold. Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the, no, it's not that uh, cold. The fuzzard fat's an excellent insulator. It is, it is. So cold doesn't make sense. And and today it's, well, it's rainy It's and it's a bit cloudy, I will I will admit. It's a bit cloudy and a little bit rainy, and that, that certainly doesn't help. Um, One point of exhaustion. Boo. Yes. And, um, and it's raining. Thanks. It's always raining. <laughs> How could I have forgotten? It's not always raining, but it's often raining. It's kind of <laughs> still spring. You forget you're still in the third month of the year. Um, and okay, I'm gonna look up a nice predator that might attack you. Hooray! Like a deer. No, no, that is not a predator, my friend. <laughs> It is truly a mysterious forest. Um, where it's really hard to see what happens. It's just, just a little loud, too. Yeah, I, I moved it down. Uh, what happens just like a few. Oh, it's still loud, isn't it? Mm hmm. Hi. Is that better? Yes. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, it's really hard to see just what happens like a few steps ahead. Uh, so it's not strange that um, you might be surprised by things. So... What, even with our excellent Pathfinder? Yes, I want <laughs> one of you to, to roll a, like an uh, wind check. Hmm. I wonder who this is. Who would roll a wind check for us? Who could that be? It's a mystery. <laughs> what the shit? Three sixes and a four. <laughs> oh, that is mine. Captain Safano. Yeah. <laughs> you are surprised. They come from. I mean, Safano's not used to forests like this. He's used to mountains and libraries. This is not Nothing his area like the at all. And suddenly from somewhere in the bush, you never heard them coming, jumps a couple of really large animals of some kind. You've never seen the like. Uh, and they will attack who exactly? Hmm. Uh, and then are all uh, randomized because you didn't see them coming, so it's a perfect ambush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. That's a 2d7, apparently. <laughs> they jump on to two and three uh, Bodonius and Deidre. Oh, uh, yeah. No one important was injured that day. <laughs> <laughs> Podonius is important. Uh, you're slashed, Podonius, by the, these immensely sharp claws. Uh, and the, the, the hissing and snarling of this beast. Um, yeah, that, that hurt. That is, uh, in fact, uh, two points of damage to you. Doesn't he get to roll fire as a defense? Or is yes, it because it's an ambush? You okay. do, yeah. I mean, he can roll a fire, but his fire is amazing. <laughs> Should I resist with stone instead you of fire? You can resist with stone, yes. Right. Which makes more sense if I'm being surprised. It's not. Yes, yes, it does. That's fair. 
Uh, yeah, you can two do points it. of damage. Do you want to take a consequence, or are we taking the damage? Um, I'll, I'll take the two points of damage for now. It doesn't, ah! it doesn't take me out yet. It just slashes you, and you're bleeding after this. We need to remember that. Um, Deidre is also being attacked. Uh, I mean, she can't really dodge this, can she? Because she's surprised, like everyone else. But she's luckier and only takes one point of damage. Um, so... She screams in pain. This is gonna make uh, uh, Gistaki very angry. Um, mm -hmm. These two things are trying to basically grab you with their jaws and drag you away from the rest of the group. But now the rest of the group can do things. What are these things? Uh, they are huge. Uh, look like ferrets, but the, about the size of a tiger, maybe? Ah, uh, yes, okay. the tiger ferret. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Comes straight out of Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> So, who wants to do something about this? Well, gosh, Mikhail, I'd like to hit one with a hammer. Go ahead! <laughs> I feel like the uh, folks with quick draw are going first. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Do you have quick draw? No, you don't. But you're walking around with a hammer, aren't you? Hammer out, now. yes. Yeah, so quick draw doesn't really apply that much. I mean, I'm probably using my the staff part of my scythe as a walking stick. Right? Since, since you're not in civilization anymore, so the hammer time, bam! On uh, which one? The one that's attacking Bedonius or Dida? I suppose the one attacking Bedonius is that one seems to be doing uh, the best. It is doing the best right now. Uh, so rather than uh, taking an action myself, can I assist Artigue? You can. Right. Dun 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 dun. dun do I uh, do I have reach on them? I'm try trying to figure out how many dice I would have. Uh, yes, you do. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like Stupid both, animals not both using of them weapons. you do, because they have natural weapons. And oh, they, look at that. You don't. Two more dice for you. Yep. So, uh, Lady Brittany flanks from one side, then comes, as it jumps away, it's going to jump right into the hammer, I guess? That's the hope. Ah! Well, hold on. <laughs> that reminds me of something. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we just gotta turn the the hammer around. We're gonna remember that from uh, the, uh, the the duel that moved me up my uh, position in the family. Right. And uh, let's uh, let's just see if maybe we can't re-roll four of those dice, eh? Wow. Ah, well, you know, dice. Dice. They're great friends of mine. Cool. Can't ah. find a six, but well, hey, three successes now. I'll take three it. successes. You know. I mean, since it's the is hammer, any hit is going to nuke them anyway, right? So, four successes. Oh, four successes? Yeah. You know. yeah. And the thing cannot match that because it only has three fire. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Feel free to describe what happens to this mustalon when uh, it meets with your hammer. Ah, uh, well, uh, Brittany scares the scary ferret off of uh, Bedonius with the staff. And it, scare it, if you will. Oh. Uh, which uh, drives it, of course, off of Bedonius and uh, just straight down in the middle of its spine as it's uh, jumping away comes the, uh, the hammer of paralysis. Boom. No, there's no magical effect for paralysis. You just won't move anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the the effect is also that it, it's like lying there like a smoking, mm -hmm. burning yeah. husk, isn't it? Because it kind of exploded too, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, I definitely do the point yep. of fire damage. Yeah. 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 <sighs> give give, give Brittany a saucy grin and uh, go look for another ferret. I mean, if nobody <laughs> else will do it, then Gistaki will definitely... Uh, well, I... I'm assuming Gustaki would have jumped on it, so I'm, I'm going to see if if he failed to save her or not. Whether yeah, I need no, to do something. Yeah, no, and he has quick draw, so Shing oh, Fu. He was also expert expert with his sword, so his long sword, so that gives him one more. So he has uh, three plus uh, his sword. Uh, I'm not going to even use it. Three, four, 
Um, and we're five. Five dice in total. Who wants to help uh, Gestaki? I can, but I don't have quick draw. And I probably do not have my sword out since I am pathfinding. That's correct. You, you throw something at it. <laughs> you can try and startle it like Brissany did. Call it mean names and hurt its feelings. Might not work. Call it a trash oh. panda. Can I use fire? <laughs> can I use fire to sort of like distract it? Like try to like jump in front of it and distract it from Deidre? Yeah. Let it go since I can't draw. There you go. Nice. That's a one success. So I guess he has six. Two successes. With a long sword. <laughs> and I mean, it's a hit and it's three successes. Uh, if I'm going to say that if the Only muscle it rolls three sixes, it might avoid uh, being hurt, but it doesn't. So that's a good slash doing, uh, I think it's two points of damage, isn't it, for a longsword? Or is it yeah. three? Well, I don't have one. I don't remember. Why don't you have a sword like all proper adventurers? I do. Uh, one second. I'm a, you have a, short I'm a knight. <laughs> I'm an assassin, so... Uh, that we are is not a good adventurers. It's a tip. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, it doesn't actually kill the thing outright, but it whines greatly when that sharp piece of metal slashes it across the side. And unless anybody's gonna do differently, it's gonna run away back into the woods from whence it came. There's no intention of fighting prey that is that effective at doing things that hurt it. Because it's not a suicidal beast, this thing. So there you are now, after having been uh, ambushed by uh, Mastalons. Uh, okay. But, and they're both bleeding? Yeah, they're both bleeding. They're going to need help. Absolutely. Yep. So I'll start with um, Bodanus, because he took more damage. He did. Um, and that roll is, again, a... Why don't I ever remember this off the top of my head? I should by now. Well, uh, I it's wind. Medicine wind. Yeah, it is. It's like a four dice. I just don't remember how many successes I need. I think it's one for... I think it's only one. You have two. That should be fine. Uh, da, 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 misery. Misery. Oh, misery. There it is. Okay. You've been, then moving you've been cut. On to... Here, uh, there we are. Uh, da, 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 wind. Uh, normally one. Yep. Yeah. So he so, doesn't bleed anymore. And then for Deidre, she's fine too. Yes. That looks like you just used some fate dice, my friend. I did just use two dice. Oh dear. No. No. You know, y'all can you know, give me some dice. Just, you know, bear in mind. <laughs> Especially those who uh, are no longer bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot give dice because they are NPCs. Uh, well, Bodonius can give a die if you know him well enough by now to have that type of relationship. Do you know each other well enough now? I don't know. My relationship section of my sheet is blank. It used to have stuff on it, but... You can just fill in new stuff. I mean, obviously, you know the other player characters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... I think we called... Was I smart enough to fill this out? These are the questions. <laughs> do How well do you know Bedonius? I would... We worked a little bit together while we were at the hut in the swamp. Yeah. Do you uh, feel Do you feel like you know uh, Sifano enough to have knowledge level one to him? I. What is knowledge level one considered? I don't know what the scale is. Uh, so. The scale is one to three, uh, and one is kind of uh, good acquaintance, I suppose. Uh, I mean, I. I think we could have at least a one. We've been traveling together for for a quite while, some time. yeah. 
Yeah. Probably so nothing. One, you've that. met a few times, you know him, name and, and uh, oh, temperament. Oh, definitely that. Oh, yeah. But you're not under his skin or anything. You don't really know his metal or his intentions. Yeah, I mean, easily one, enough to give him one of the one fate die to... Yep. I'll drop down so to six. Your knowledge is one, and... Uh, I'll check that off because that means that you can't do that anymore this session. But Sifano now has a new fake die. Yay! And Pedonius <laughs> has one less. So do the Mustalons uh, have uh, show evidence of uh, of having been uh, victimized by the uh, misspell shrubberies? Um, not too badly, but yes, some. <laughs> these these little seeds they have like a, a I mean you can see them everywhere in any bush basically. They have like barbs on them that attach. You know, like you have on a on a uh, any type of of uh, imp fish hooks with that little. Um, so yeah, it, it it knows how to attach itself to passersby and draw blood, and getting rid of them is a bit of a hassle because when you try to pull them out, it, it really hurts. Or would if you weren't, you know, all oiled up. Professionally greased. Professionally greased, yes. In a word, lubricated. Lub very much so. <laughs> very much so. So this was an eventful day, your first day in the forest. Uh, let's see how far you actually get today. It's uh, it's hard to mar march here because uh, it's uh, so very dense, the, the undergrowth. So that's going to take you about, well, not too shabby. You get to about bearish. You're halfway to, yes, uh, the massive uh, mountain that is starting to loom um, out of the ceiling of the foliage. It's not all this at all. No, that's probably a mountain. And that's really about an eight hour journey. Well, at least we're on dry land. Well, Ish. if it wasn't raining. If it wasn't raining. <laughs> right. It's never You're correct. very well protected from the rain down here. The the foliage it's just really dripping on you. It's 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 moist. It's it's very humid. Um, nothing stays terribly dry. It, your your uh, boots are gonna go squish squish a little bit um, as as you path through the undergrowth. But it's much better to be here than out on the plains where you would probably be pretty drenched by now. So that's a bonus. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. Rithany's going to find being constantly damp is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even see what this humidity is doing to my hair? I mean... We're choosing not to notice. <laughs> it's fine. What's wrong with it? The, the bedraggled wet look is uh, very in. You're adorable. I, uh, I, I can't support that, but I can't. <laughs> um, Eldrida, you've been looking for some place to make camp for the night. Um, mm -hmm. Any clearing, anything big enough to pitch a tent or bedrolls or what have you. Uh, and you do find a clearing. Great. Um, I'm also, <clears throat> while we're going, I'm actively looking for things that I could use for the garland for um, RDU. 
Uh, you, given that you had such a trouble navigating today, I'm gonna say you didn't find anything special. You, you've been so confused by this weird forest that, that you, you just had to find the paths uh, and not be turned around all the time because whatever animals are walking around here, they're not walking in a straight path. And huh. getting your bearings about, you know, where's the sun right now? Am I going north or south? Where is the mountain? Do I have to climb a tree to see where I'm at? You know, all that kind of thing. It's it's quite confusing. Um, but no in problem. this in this particular uh, little glade, uh, there are four uh, shrubberies, I suppose. Um, they're standing in a straight line. Four shrubberies. Yep. I'm looking for Roger. Standing in a straight line. Juniper. <laughs> juniper shrubberies. They're are, about are, the same height as you guys. Are these the ones we sing to, do you think? I don't... I mean, I don't know. Um, do I think that these shrubberies are um, sentient? I just want to say, get me a shrubbery, okay? I just really want to say that out loud. <laughs> I know I, you do. Uh, well, um, difficult to say. Uh, like, the last this... one has lost all the needles. It seems like it's dead. Um, and uh, as you are looking through this... Can I, yeah, I approach closer to yeah. the shrubbery. These suspicious <laughs> shrubberies. Yeah, you're approaching the shrubberies. You will hear a voice rah, from the the edge of the the um, glade. Oh. Hello. You are looking at a man who is riding a horse. No, wait. A man who is a horse. No. Oh my god! What? It's a fucking centaur. Really. He's. Ah! Robert, shut your just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Steph's Very favorite. red hair and uh, beard. Um, he's, I mean, his, his tummy is nice and oh, he's Safinian, let's say, in his rotundness. Uh, but he has a uh, leather uh, jerkin, he has a, a lance, he has a, a, a longbow. Um, Looks a bit old, this, his equipment to you, Sir Artigue? Like, old-fashioned old? stuff? Vintage. And yeah. You, he's Classic. Like, as, as you're standing there, um, in, in, in the glade, looking at the juniper shrubberies and the horse man, he will bark at you. Run, Sardi! Cleveco! Hello. Do you speak a different tongue? I go Run, through... Sardi! Cleveco! Um, He's probably uh, telling you to get out of the little, little We're not area. Red Sardi. Run, uh, Sardi! He's putting no, a, an arrow no, on the string. No. Do you speak any other languages? Does anybody speak other languages? Yeah. Why well, do I think for his, some reason Moon lands, Magic has... Um, th I think this is something that Sir Artigue will recognize. On his lands, uh, there is, in fact, the um, flag, and, and Lady Brittany would, I think, recognize it too, the flag of the Clavician uh, Empire with the golden key and the white tapir against the red. This is a, f a flag that hasn't been used since before the Decoran Empire. We we're talking centuries. Right, right, right. Fortunately, though, I've got this fancy armor on Artigue that I am certain Garion did not overlook putting some of the I simple... probably gesture frantically at the white to appear on his armor. Yeah, <laughs> right. uh, uh, uh. I mean, you won't understand this manticore bit over here, but look at the tapir and the key over here. Oh, <laughs> uh, Clavico! Clavico! 
Yeah. Clevico! Ah ha ha! He puts away the um, bow and arrow. Clevico! And he comes up and he pats you on the shoulder. Clop, I clop, but he clop. Pat him up on his shoulder immensely high and say, Cool. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Excellent. I point at Artigue and I say, Artigue. And then I point at Horse. And I make like, Point you? at Horse. <laughs> well, it's a horse. Artigue. Eldrida. Hmm. Huh. No? Huh. Nah. Eldrida. Eldrida. Artigue. And then I point at him, and I... Uh, 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 um, he goes up to the, the juniper bushes, and he, he pets them. Uh, uh, Cliveco, Cliveco, and he points to Sir Artigue. Cliveco! Maybe we should water the one that's dying? Is this Cliveco! The... Is this the nurturing test, maybe? Oh my god! Um, is the plant sick? No, I think this is the dispel. I think that they've been turned into plants. Okay, do I see... What? I think... If okay. they're lined up in a row like this, does it... Okay. <clears throat> this is this is a crazy question. Uh, Mikhail, does it look like these plants grew naturally in this orderly way? Or does it look like they were standing or specifically planted in that way? You were looking at them very carefully, clearly. Um, yes. The chances for a Pathfinder like you, that these would be naturally growing in a straight line like this, are next to zero. Uh, they have must seen... have been planted or something else. Have I seen other juniper plants in this forest on the way here so far? Nope. Yeah, these are not, these are Klavikian Empire people who have been turned into plants. That's you... my guess. You know what? The as you're looking carefully at them, because that's clearly what you're doing, inside the needles, the trunks are kind of human shaped. Yep, called it. I told you. Uh, that's a good okay. call. Let's dispel. I look at our wizard. <laughs> yeah, I've well, so fine. Out of character. Like I don't know magic. how this works. <laughs> uh, dispel is a general spell. Okay. Uh, use any of your magic uh, spheres. Uh, so every um, every spellcaster can cast some general spells, including sense magic, obscure magic, bind magic, magic attack, chase. Uh, you can do yeah, the magic defense uh, and so on. So yeah, you can do. Uh, Dispel thing. Uh, just okay. I absolutely will. Want to make it a ritual two. sheet? Yeah, I'll, I can help. We can all help. Yeah. Those... Okay. I'd yeah. suggest doing this in a creationist way. <laughs> well, yeah. I thought we were going to do this in a naked dancing way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is doing what? Who are we? What are we doing? I was well, if I'm doing it, I'm ritual. doing it with necromancy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, that's already used down with necromancy. Yeah. Why don't go. we do this? Oh. Why don't we do this with Bodinius leading for stone that way? Maybe. Bodonius can definitely ask the soil. That's questions. more creationist and better, and that well, way, um, Arty, you can also jump on the stone magic. Well, first off, uh, it doesn't actually matter who I'm assisting ritually. I'm worth the exact same benefit as are you. Um, two, uh, since these are clearly poor innocent souls who've been turned into juniper bushes and we should be trying to save them so that we can further our quest, I think the chosen one, the most powerful necromancer in all the world, should use necromancy. Not to knock Bedonius, but I've never heard of you before uh, I met you, whereas Fanu's reputation rings loud and proud across continents. I don't know. I think the one who brought fertility back to the Viscorian Plains should be the one to uh, to take the lead personally. Oh, but he's a 
but he's a way better wizard than I am. Can we just do this in a creationist manner, regardless? I'm pretty sure that correct is like inherently anti-creationist. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. it is. I don't think uh, anything I can do is creationist. <laughs> no, necromancy is definitely not creationist in any way. So again, Artigue or Bodinius, I would go back to. Clavico. 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 I point at Clavico. Especially since, you know, he's the Clavico of... Clavico. All right, fine. No, 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 fine. If, uh, if you don't mind, Fidonius, I'll leave this ritual, but it's going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, God. I just feel like I'm going to have to lick dirt again. I locked uh, yeah, eyes no. with Lady Brisbane. I was like, this is you. You do this. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. Step one is full on nudity. Step two is oh, tasting. Oh, don't pretend you're not into this, Sipanu. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta lick rocks, people. Uh, then I have Bedonius meditate on God, I don't know, the earth that they're stuck growing in. I'll have Brithany keep tasting the dirt oh. <laughs> so she can detect changes. In no. its mineral content. <laughs> um, uh, Stefano can, in fact, just dance around the ritual circle naked. And, I can't uh, have El his job. Uh, and Eldrina can sit there and huff some, uh, some cicatla while she hums. And there you go. There's a ritual. Kestur, <laughs> says the horseman. Kestur! And he Kestur. starts Start doing dancing. something with his hoofs that is, I guess, a horse dancing. Sure. Yes, I mean, sure. as long as he's naked, he's invited. He, he He's a horse. I don't think he's wearing clothes. He, he's, he's wearing, wearing a jerkin. He's wearing yes, a jerkin. I'm not here to judge. I, I gesture that you should take the jerkin off and, you know, take the jerkin off. He, I <laughs> don't know if he gets anything. <laughs> Robert! <laughs> Well, can, can I assist with the ritual using a water roll to convince the horse dude to take his jerkin off so that we are all naked? <laughs> I mean, the rest of us are getting naked. You can certainly try. <laughs> <laughs> I really just don't want to be eating dirt. Is, is... But how will we know if the salt oh, 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 Look at that roll. <laughs> Horse dudes get naked. <laughs> she, she really doesn't want to eat that dirt. <laughs> Stop. Horse family. dude will get naked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He he's doing it. Like oh oh, clavico clavico, ump ump. All right. Well, <laughs> in an attempt to free these people from their uh, ensorcelled state, uh, I suppose I'll spend two feta. That's tragedy. How many bonus do I have at this point from How my ritual people are participants? I think I have Everyone? one, two, three, four, five, if you count the centaur. I'll give you three. Cool, cool. Uh, right. Why don't uh, you can have one of my fate dice as well. Oh, thanks. So uh, let's see now. He will find himself at a seven. Mm hmm. And uh, you will find yourself at a nine then, Lady Brittany. Is that correct? At a nine. What a tragedy. Yep. Okay, so my base here is five. I have three bonus dice. So that's eight. Uh, let's see if I can unsorcel some people. Yep. Which, with uh, Alan's expert research, we now realize is not anti creationist if I don't ask for permission first. It's <laughs> On the plus side, I feel like you are the most polite technician. Oh, yeah. Nardigu is just straight up down there on the ground, naked as the day he was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Licking the earth and having a conversation with the plants. Maybe taste some of the plant. That makes sense. Eat a leaf. Eat a leaf. Don't yeah. eat the people. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> the energy around one less here. Toe. I mean, it's the earth and energies. And you can you can see them. I mean, all of you who are, are uh, skilled in magic, because you're not obscuring this, are you? No, um, that's more expensive. Because see these green energies coming up from the dirt itself into all of the juniper bushes. And slowly but surely, a very old curse crackles and 
breaks under your work and they lose all their needles and then the branches turn to flesh and bone and one of them keels over as like the one who lost all the needles um, just falls over dead as a doornail um, and is even like a bunch of bones at this point uh, two more also fall over dead already uh, they're dressed in very old armor um, but the fourth one is actually not dead the fourth one stayed up the fourth one <laughs> falls down on his knees <laughs> ugh ugh uh huh hello are they centaurs as well or are they nope humans humans oh and kester uh marches over to this man and just embraces him he's like oh kester oh and and he starts speaking in some very old-fashioned uh, language. Uh, uh, what? What happened? He, he looks around and, and sees his friends and he pulls out his, his weapon. Um. I'm going to go to the other two guys it's just to see if there is something I can do for them. Obviously I can't, but Who I don't thou? know that. Just standing. I start putting my clothes back on. Who art thou? Who comes and thus to ambush us? We're He's naked. Not, a, not an ambush. <laughs> we are we are so far from ambushing. I'm sorry, Lady B. You should talk. He has he has an axe at his belt, uh, and he was wearing a chainmail, and he just uh, moves that axe into his hand immediately. I'm uh, I'm gonna try and talk until before he attacks us all, who are all naked. Hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, I guess it's a water roll, hey? Yes. Look. Yes, it is. Clavos, I point at the centaur. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's two successes. Yeah, his uh, water is maybe not quite as impressive. Um, Plus, he was just a bush. Plus, <laughs> he was just a bush. Uh, so, I'll give him two dice for that. You talk him down. Not a bush. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't very hard. Uh, who, who art thou, fair maiden? Oh, thank you. How comest thou to this cursed place? Can... In the blink of an eye, we go from a troop, and my friends are dead. Yeah, I need one of the, like, magic people to explain it to you, but, like, it seems like you were under a curse or can something. I, can I make a scholar Where is the lake? Help? Yes, you can absolutely make a scholar check. Here. Based on all the clues, I want to see if I can tell when he is from. Uh, are we adding a fate die to this? Uh, sure, yeah. So you're down to a five. Four dice for you, sir. That's wow. Them some wow. dice. <laughs> That's three successes. Two of them are sixes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you look over his armor, old fashioned. You look over, uh, you listen to his speech, uh, his weapons of choice. Uh, this man was obviously some kind of, of lower officer or mid ranking officer, judging by the pauldrons. Uh, in uh, the Neo-Clavician Empire. Uh, since he believes there was a lake here, uh, you're thinking the war between the Clavician Empire and the Ransardi uh, some 400 years ago. Wonderful. All right, so I'll, 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 I'll sort of step forward uh, after I've thrown my robe around myself. Like, sir... 
I'm afraid to be the one to have to tell you this. It's been some 400 years that you've been trapped here. 400 years? Huh. He sits down. <laughs> huh. Huh. I'm afraid your companions did not survive the curse that trapped you here. That gesture to the ones that are now lying on the ground. The corpses. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Uh, it must have been a Ronsardi villain cursing us. They have sorcerers among their clergy. Do you, do, do they even exist anymore? Yeah, Ransard is a is a thing. Oh, it yeah, is. Okay. Yeah. But, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, uh, Ransard is Safina, in fact. Uh, Ransard is the. You should think of them as Vikings with Griffin cavalry. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Oh, they're the Griffin guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, they live uh, east of the Tricorn Empire on on the continent. Yeah, Safina used to be part of their territory. Yes. But both the Clavicans and uh, the uh, Tracorians have fought wars with them. Uh, Tracorian Empire and the Ronsardi Empire, they're like arch nemesis. It's like England and France, basically. All right, so they are. In a nutshell, they lose a lot here on Safina. <laughs> Apparently. Uh. I. Uh. Whither the cause now? Somebody should tell him the state of the empire. <laughs> well, um, good news. The Klavikian Empire has risen again. Uh, ah. So there's that. Who rules? Um, my mistress, Georgiana Naramsina. Ah. Well, uh, Hail the Empress, then. And the Emperor. And the Emperor, of course. Hmm. Well, what, it's interesting. Is... Th there are obviously traces of the Junipery existence in him still. Like, he has a crew cut, but looking carefully at that black stub of a hair, it kind of looks like juniper needles rather than hair. And his skin is a bit flaky, kind of like Mark. What is the centaur doing during this process? Oh! <laughs> uh, 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 clavico, clavico! Uh, go! Uh, uh, stab! He takes the last. Stab, stab, around Sardi. What? Do you understand what he's saying? Well, I mean, that was. I'm easy. pretty sure clavico means clavician. Mm hmm. Do you know him? I ask the soldier. Uh, yes, yes, uh, that I do. Uh, he he was our guide. He has been guarding you, I guess, for four hundred years. Uh, it seems yes. I hope you paid him in advance. I was going to say, without him, we would not have ever known to like look at you. Twice, really. I uh, owe you both uh, uh, my life. Oh. Uh, can you sail a ship? <laughs> uh, nay. Oh. That is okay. not uh, an art. I. That is not my trade. I am a, a warrior. An officer. Uh, do you happen to know of any um, oracles nearby, maybe? Holy orders? Nay, not at all. 
we were uh, encamped by the lake. That was here. Only a moment ago, it seems. How about any uh, valleys? Hmm? How about some very tall trees? There were no trees here then. Interesting. This guy predates the prophecy. That's that's weird for just 400 years. Okay. <laughs> um. I mean, I don't know if it means anything, but you were a juniper bush previously. Uh. I. He, he's he's yeah. He's still coping with this. Right. I should probably put some clothes on. And <laughs> that's only going to disappoint him. <laughs> I've definitely just been standing there naked, having this chat this whole time. Yep. Very comfortable in her body. His uh, his lady Brittany. He's like ah. Uh... <laughs> no to these noticing that you're all naked. <laughs> <laughs> Have... It was part of the ritual to um, undo the curse. Oh. Uh, you I, have a name, I soldier? owe you my life. Do you have a name, soldier? That I do. My name is Gadagormga. Gadagormga? Bootmaster Gadagormga, yes. I'm sure my mistress will be very pleased to meet you, and um, she quite enjoys talking about her family history, and I'm sure you, I mean, you were there for some of it, so. Uh, I, uh, well, I, I owe you, uh, my life, and I will do what thou askest of me, fair lady. We should probably take him with us. He's probably not equipped to deal with the the uh, things in this forest the way he is. Uh, yeah. He's calling me fair lady. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, my, yeah. No, my I... trade is an officer. I I fight wars. That is, I know not of scholarly pursuits. Well, yeah, I, 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 I think my buddy Safanu has the, the right uh, shot there. Uh, just uh, come along with us, and uh, uh, we're on a quest to save the world, and uh, then we'll drop you off with the uh, new, new Clavikian Empire uh, when we get a chance. Uh, where, where? Very did you well, my lord. Where did you hail from originally? Don't say that. <laughs> um, I, I, I am Clavikian. Yes, but which, uh, like, where? I, I suppose it doesn't matter. It's been a long time. Um, but where? Where is home? Uh, Muscoria. Oh, okay, good. That's that's the that's fertile better. plains of Muscoria. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so the world has changed a lot while you were being a bush. Um, so we can talk more about that, but just um, so you know, things are a little different now. Plus, mm. we, we can talk about the past or updating him on what reality now is while we walk. Let's keep going. Still looking for a valley. I mean, this is a good place to make camp, otherwise um, Aldrida, you were looking for a campsite and it's like the, the you, you've been walking all day. If you want to keep walking I'm going to give you more exhaustion because you know, it's been... That's what originally brought us to this clearing was the need to make camp so yep. I think that that would be the best thing to do and yeah, like, um, we what? spent all day and made it five miles? Yep. That's, yeah. This is a dense forest. 
you know, Fedonius barks himself down on a rock. He is currently full on uh, both exhaustion and damage. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> you might want to spend the evening attending to that. <laughs> I guess we're six o'clock, setting up camp. Yep. So I suppose, I mean, DJ needs some some uh, attention from, from Sifanu as well. I have exhaustion on me. Same perpetually, but mm-hmm. if if sh- to heal her damage, even Artie is tired. Even Artie is t- tired. Yeah, um. she needs two scenes actually of of recovery because she's exhausted and damaged, and Bedonius is also exhausted and damaged, and needs two scenes of recovery. So, uh, well. Okay. I mean, sleeping can help, you know, from one for was, one of the things, and then you spend the I, evening doing something else. I was actually thinking, since um, I spent all that time, like, looking at herbs and things like that, and since I'm just a little bit exhausted, can I blow a fate die to create a, um, I don't know, like a, a, a potion and see if I can make one big enough for the group to help relieve some exhaustion? Sure, sure. Let's try it. Uh, I mean, we do have some healing potions and things. Um, yeah, we do. We, we can also just nap for six. two scenes. Do you want to do that, or do you want to try to push hard? You, would you rather just nap for two scenes? I mean, I mean, tomorrow you might have to push hard. You never know, right? So, okay. Yeah, let's just rest until we get back up on our feet. Okay. So no, no potion making. No well, potion making. Y- you could still make the potion. We still may need it later. Uh, I could actually, if we're going to spend two scenes, because I need one scene for my exhaustion, but the second scene, I'm not doing anything. I could make up some potions for later. That works. So you spend a couple of hours in the evening uh, while the others are just kind of <laughs> relaxing and kicking back, uh, making the thing. Does and- Bodonis even have armor? No. Nope. But only okay. Have armor. He does not have armor nor a weapon. Okay. I mean, let's, would let's any fix of the Corbethians armor fit him? I mean, probably what Lady Brittany might be doing is, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, consulting the. Uh, he said his title was Bootmaster? Yeah. Yep. About how to bury his friends, because you shouldn't just leave them here. No, that's that's a good idea. And that's also not a restful activity, but it only takes a single scene to do it, so. Yeah. I think, because I think I'm just exhausted rather than yeah. being exhausted. Yeah, and yeah same. It's really Deidre and Bodonius who needs the two scenes. Just tired. So, okay. uh, yeah, you will uh, do just that, and... Uh, uh, no, but that's, that's a solid question, though, about the uh, armor. Yeah, that is a good question, isn't it? Um... They they are wearing the same armor as he is, and uh, that would be you know a, a <laughs> chainmail armor. Okay, it would it be insulting to steal it though? <laughs> very old chainmail. Yeah, is it is it light armor or heavy? No, armor? it's heavy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's heavy. You're gonna, have, yeah. you're gonna have a point of exhaustion per scene wearing that. Yep. Yeah, Donis is not gonna be wearing no heavy armor. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. I'm going to spend one of those scenes doing some cargo machine runes. Ooh, and I'm going to try to enchant the armor to turn it into light. Ah. I'll remind you there are two uh, fate die floating out there. There are. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> if you want to use those, you he know, still has to spend one of his own. absorb them. <laughs> but uh, that would allow you to use three fate dies in total to do this cargo mission-ness. Yeah. Oh, but Deidre uh, cannot help, unfortunately, because she's busy resting. Right. Mm-hmm. Six dice. And roll. That is two successes. Uh, you only want to have that one effect that it makes that is light, right? Uh, yeah. I feel like that um, could be done with two successes. Well, it's a, yeah. And I'm also debating re-rolling just to use up this experience to level sooner. Mm. Then maybe you could get two magical sets of armor out of this, and I could put Brithy yeah. on something. Yeah, 
more protective than a yeah, fancy dress. I'm going to go ahead and do that and re-roll. Now, observe I mean, I, that... I, I, um, I did have the leather armor, but I, was, I definitely wasn't wearing it because I would have been getting double exhaustion because it's not light. I will point out that if you were doing this to like create the effect of light armor instead of heavy, that's fine. That's one thing. It's also incredibly old and probably kind of brittle by now, because, you know, 400 years. Oh, so you're saying yeah. shit. Yes, yes, I'm saying it's... Uh, oh, wait, did the, did the people age? not be worth it to spend the... Three of them died. <laughs> so, yes. You know, I know, they got some bad soil, I don't know. <laughs> That's possible. Her soil possible. made it age so faster. Is, I don't know. So how is this guy still alive then? Maybe he's sturdier than the others. Maybe he has some kind of life bond with the immortal centaur. Maybe they're lovers and we'll have to find another centaur for Eldrita. Oh my god, I am not. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> Can't believe there's a centaur. All right. <laughs> so it, it this um, armor does have the flaw of being a bit brittle. Uh, I'll do it anyway, just because you know we should. Have, people should be armored. Well, right. and if you have enough successes, you better. might be able to. Well, if he has that's, enough successes, he might be able to take away the brittle effect. You might. That, that is, is enough successes. You have so where one, is that? Two, ah, yes, the one three, is in the front, so that's not one of the fake dice. So that is, in fact, power level four because three fake dice. For, yeah, I'll allow you to make it no longer brittle and uh, light. Excellent. There you go, Bodonius. Bodonius now has armor that is light. It's heavy. So it's it's light armor, but it protects like heavy armor. Right. Uh, Which is how many points of protection? Two. 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 And yeah. it means it is a two level two limit to your fire. So if you had fire three, you would not have more than two <laughs> using it. It's uh, also an antique. It's also it's an, an antique. antique. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> if you ever get tired of it. Of adventuring, you could probably sell this to a museum. Yeah, and <laughs> yes. well preserved. We Very well preserved. It also helps display your loyal loyalty to the Neo Clavician Empire. Yes, <laughs> all of the above, in fact. <laughs> Nothing but benefits here. Um, all right. We'll so get you on those wanted, po wanted posters yet, don't you worry? Can, can, La <laughs> can Lady B help me with the potion making since she has it as well? Uh, I was burying dead during oh, my. Uh, dead. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So. Since I have potion making two now, does that mean I spend two fate die to make potions? You can. Because it's up to. Yeah, I will then, because that you, gives me, it only gives me no, four you, dice then. You spend right. one fate die, because that's all you have in potion making. No, you have two potion making. You I can spend two, two now. You just got the second. Yeah, you can spend two, yeah. All right, so Jeez, that gives me 46. Please roll. Oh, really, world? That's 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 one success. <laughs> well, look, no I, success. I just spent some time learning recipes and stuff from the Safinians. You did. So let's re-roll three of those. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's my bad. Okay. Now we have three successes. One of them being a six. That's lovely. So, so I'm making your... anti. I want to make anti-exhaustion potions. That's yep. for the future. Stimulating po a potion, in other what words. What does that allow me to do? How, like, does that allow me to make more than one? Or uh, oh, yeah. with one success, one six, you it, no, you make one dose. But I thought it was exponential. I thought one success was one dose. Two successes no, was like sixes. five dose. It's sixes. Oh. So one six doesn't. Oh, One it doesn't six pick up power means level like that spells the potion do. works as intended and does not have any side effects. Two sixes means that you make ten. Ten doses. doses. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry. So a regular power success level. means uh, you made the potion, but it has a side effect. Okay. You so spare the side effect, I... you have uh, a stimulating potion that will just restore. Um, and how many points of... Exhaustion will resort one, two, three because of three successes. 
That's actually pretty good, so it'll clear yep. exhaustion. So that's where the number of successes plays in. I believe. Let's see now. Effects. Uh. So I've got a healing potion. Uh, I just pulled up the uh, potion rolls. And one success potion works as intended. You make one dose. Zero successes. You make one dose, but it has a side effect. No, no. It has. It's the. It's the um, uh, number of of uh, sixes. Results of a potion make. So it's it's not successes. It's sixes. I didn't write it down properly, but that's what it is. Uh, oh, okay. That's the same for crafting and and all of those things. And, and okay. Yeah. So. Just um, <laughs> Yep. So there we are. It's gonna heal. Uh, yeah, it heals equal to its strength, and the strength is the difficulty. So you can make a, a level three uh, exhaustion healing potion with that roll. And that puts me at five fate die remaining. Four, I believe. Nope. Five. Five. I gained. I gained two for helping Lady okay. B, and then I lost one for fortune telling, one for the forest, which puts me down to seven, and then two more for right. just the potion making, which is five fate die. Right? There we are. Okay then. So, um, and with that, I would say that night falls over people who are healing, people who are, uh, you know. Uh, getting massage from Gistaki. Hi, DJ. Uh, uh, Gistaki is also, you know, recovering from the exhaustion himself as well as, as I, I'm guessing Sorority he was doing this too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm re just, just looking to recover from my exhaustion. Bodonius, how are you recovering from the damage? Uh... I mean, do you need the uh, doctor or medical skill to be able to, like, bandage yourself? You, no rolls are no rolls are required. It's just you know, uh, maybe Sifanu can give me some attention before I go to sleep and check the bandages or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Check over the bandage and stuff before I go to sleep to make sure I haven't you know reopened the wounds or anything. Yeah. And then it will heal properly overnight. And that is where we leave our brave adventurers. They are in the magical Tokme Forest. Clearly magical, because you just found people inside juniper bushes. <laughs> and uh, um, that's, that's where we're at for this time. I'm sure nothing more weird will happen in Tokme. Of course not. No, no it's no. fine. It's going to be fine. Maybe there, maybe there are more centaurs. Who knows? Maybe we can find some of those weird fish people. If I was a deep one. Bl bl no, wait. Um, <laughs> wrong game. <laughs> wrong game. It's just, Artie just wants to know which half's a fish. But <laughs> the left half. Uh, oh, hey. I love it. See you all in a couple of weeks. Bye. See everyone in two weeks. Bye-bye.